The following is a class on the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on October 17, 1975, in Durban, South Africa. I shall speak some verses from Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, in which the Supreme Personality of God is Krishna, uh, instructed. The beginning of instruction is the second chapter, Bhagavad Gita. So Arjun, representing ourselves, conditioned soul, uh, covered with the material body and thinking in bodily conception of life, he was to fight with his brothers, nephews, grandfather, Bhishma Dev, also uh, teacher in military science, Trona Charge. In this way, the business was not very palatable, although he was forced to find it. But the opposite party were very near thick and thin people. And he had to kill them, so it was not very satisfactory to him. Therefore, he flatly denied to fight. Krishna, I am not going to fight. He left his weapon and <coughs> Then Krishna surprised that my friend Arjuna he is denying denying to fight in my presence. So Sanjaya, the private secretary of Maharaj Dhritarashtra, he was relaying the message which was going on in the battle of Kurukshetra. Uh, by higher process, nowadays we have got experience of the television, but the another process, antadrishti, that is also television, you can see the reflection of external activities within your heart, and you can explain. So, Sanjaya, the private secretary of Maharaj Dhritarashtra, he explained that what June was denying to fight. So, Tangatatha Kripayavishtam Asupurna Kulekshanam Vishidantam idanga vacham uvacha madhusudam. <coughs> madhusudam is Krishna's another name. So, when Krishna saw that Arjun is unnecessarily disturbed, then uh, Tanga tatha kripaya vishtam asupurna kulesh kharam. Asupurna. His eyes was full with tears. Krishna, I have to fight with my relative. So he was crying. This is not very good business. So why he was crying? Kripaya vishtam being merciful upon them. They were so cruel upon the Pandavas that they insulted their wife, they tricked 
how to take away their kingdom. All this injustice was done to them. Still, because Arjun is a Vaishnava, a devotee, still he was sympathetic. Now, let them do whatever they have done, but I am not going to kill them. So, Kripaya Avishtam Asukurla Kulekshanam Vishidam. Bhagavan was. Then, after Arjun being silent, not to fight, then Bhagavan, Krishna is Bhagavan. Bhagavan means the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full with all opulences. That is called Bhagavan. Generally, in India we speak Bhagavan. Bhagavan means one who has got opulences. So, Bhagavan means one who is full in opulences, in wealth, in strength, in influence, in beauty, in education, in renunciation. In this sixth way, when one is opulent fully, then he can be called Bhagavan. Uh, partially, if one is very opulent, sometimes he is also called Bhagavan. But real Bhagavan, according to Shastra, is Krishna. Krishna su Bhagavan Sayam. Others, they may possess some of the opulences, not in full, partially. Just like Narad Muni, or Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, they are also sometimes called Bhagavan. But real Bhagavan is Krishna. Krishna su Bhagavan Sayam. Iti Changsakala Pumsa Krishna su Bhagavan Sayam. So here Bhagavan, the supreme person, Krishna. Krishna means as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Matta Paratanam Nanyat Kinchidasti Dhananjaya. There is no more superior person or element more than me. And when Arjuna understood Krishna, he also admitted, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhava. So Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the origin of Brahma. He is the origin of Paramatma. Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sabdhati. The Absolute Truth is uh, experienced in three ways. Brahma, Paramatma and Bhagavan. So Bhagavan is the last word of the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Person. Therefore, Vasudev has purposefully written here, see Bhagavan Vacha. Bhagavan Vacha means you cannot uh, exceed the Supreme Person. Nobody can be equal to the Supreme Person. Nobody can be more than the Supreme Person. Everyone should be under the Supreme Person. That is the meaning of Bhagavan. So Bhagavan uh, said, Kutastha kasmalam idam visame samapastitam anadya dhishtam asadam akiti karamadya. My dear Arjun, you are my friend, personal friend, and you are proposing this which is befitting to the onarya, onarya justam. This is not for the Aryan. You are Kshatriya, you are meant for fighting for justice, and you are denying to fight. Oh, this is not good. Onarya justam. This, this kind of proposal, cowardice, can be proposed by the onarja. 
Harya means the advanced. One who is advanced in knowledge, in civilization, they are called Harya, Aryan civilization. So in the Aryan civilization, there are four divisions. To maintain the society in the correct balance, that is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Chatut Bhannang Maya system Guno Karma Vibhaga. The society must be divided into four classes of men. The first class means most intelligent class of men, they should be trained up as Brahman. Sama, Dhamma, Sattam, Saucham, Titiksha, Arjamam, Jnanam, Vijnanam, Astikam, Brahma Karma, Sabhav. So, this is the beginning of civilization. Not that all sudras, as it is now in this age, kalau sudra sammava, kali there is no training how to train, qualify a section of person to become first class brahmana. That training is not there. Neither chhatriya. Neither pure Vaishya class. We are proud of our business, Vaishya. But Vaishya means Krishi Goraksha Vanijam Vaishya Karma Sabhava. Vaishya means they should take care of the cows, cow protection, Goraksha. Why Goraksha? Why not other animal loksha? Uh, Krishna has not said animal loksha or janwar loksha. Goraksha. A cow is very, very important animal. If you want to advance your spiritual consciousness, then you must have sufficient milk and sufficient grains. That is civilization. Therefore, it is the duty of the Vaishyas to produce food grain. Annar bhavanti bhutani. Annar, if you have in the society, if you have got sufficient anna, both the animals and the man, they will be happy. These are the instructions in the Bhagavad Gita. Everything practical. If we follow Bhagavad Gita from all angles of vision, social, political, economical, religious, cultural, uh, you will be perfect. This is Bhagavad Gita. We are therefore taken up this mission to preach Bhagavad Gita as it is, to solve all the problems of the world. That is Aryan civilization. Aryan civilization means following the principles of Bhagavad Gita. So here Krishna is addressing Arjuna on Arj, non Aryan. You are Kshatriya. Your service is now required to fight with persons who have created injustice. So what is this that you are denying to fight? On Arjustam and Asargam. Asargam means by denying your duty, you cannot be elevated in your next life, or you cannot be elevated in the higher planetary system. Uh, for a Kshatriya, uh, it is the duty of the Kshatriya to fight and lay down his life. Then he is promoted to the higher planetary system. That is the Shastric Indian. If he becomes victorious, then he enjoys this material world, and if he dies, he is promoted to heaven. These things are there. Therefore, uh, Krishna is advising Arjuna, Asardam, uh, if you deny to fight, then you will be refused to enter in the higher planetary system of Karam. And you have, you are known 
as a great fighter, great soldier, and and my friend, and this will be go, going against your reputation. Uh, don't do this. Uh, then he says, "Kleibang maasma gama pratha naita tui upapadati khudrang vidaya dorbarang tapto thista parantapa." My dear friend, parantapa. Parantapa means one who gives trouble to the enemies. This is the material world. A chhatriya cannot behave like a brahmana to excuse. Brahmana business is to excuse. Kamarupa tapasina. Those who are tapasi, they can excuse. But those who are in the governmental path to make justice, there is no question of excuse. Ah, life for life. You have killed one man, you must be killed. This is justice. Ah. Ah, a brahmana, he may excuse all life. You have killed my man, never mind. I excuse you. That is brahmana's business. But a khatriya, the government, the ruling power, he cannot do so. Ah. It is his mercy. It is the government's mercy. When a murderer is hanged, that is the injunction in the Manushangu. Uh, so Parantapa, you are Kshatriya, uh, your business is to punish the unjust. Uh, for a Kshatriya, this kind of uh, poor heartedness that I shall not find. Give it up. Uh, don't uh, indulge in such things. Then Arjuna said, Arjuna replied, Tathaṁ bhīśma-mahaṁ saṅkhe dronaṁ ca madhusudana isu bhi pajidasrāmi pujārahā rishudana. He is addressing Krishna as orishudana, the killer of the enemy. He says, but in my case, I have to fight with bhīśma dronācā. They are my well-wisher, and how can I kill them? It is my duty to offer my respect touching their feet, and you are enticing me to pierce their body with arrow. And so, of course, you have killed so many enemies, but you have killed enemies. Why you are inducing me to kill my grandfather and my teacher? This is of course, Arjuna also intelligent, he replied that uh, you cannot accuse me as anarya. This is the consideration, therefore I am hesitating to fight. Then he says, Guru Nahatahi Mahanu Bhava Sriya Bhoktum Bhoikham Apiha Loke Itcha Hatyatha Kamangstu Guru Nihaiva Bhunji of Hogan and Rudhira Pradigna. They are not only my grandfather, they are Guru. And Mohanubhav, very great personality, Bhishma De Dunatar. So if I kill them and if I leave prosperously taking the kingdom, do you think it is all right that I live on the blood of my Guru and great personality? Do you think it is all right? Hmm. <clears throat> of course, he says, Nachaita vidvam kataranna gariya jadva jayema jadiva no jayegu janeva hatyana jiji vishama te avasthita pro mukhidhaturastra. Krishna, actually I am puzzled. It is my duty to fight. But now I am puzzled whether I shall fight or not fight. Because after all the other side, they are my relatives, family members, Dhaturastha. Dhaturastha is my elder brother of my father, and his sons, they are my cousin brothers. So I am puzzled whether I shall fight. He plainly explained his position that not that I have become onario, I have got sufficient strength, I can fight, but I am puzzled. 
whether I shall fight in this case or not. Then he submits, Katpanna dosu upahata sabhava, prichyami tanas dharma sangamura chita. Jatshya sya nishitam bhritan me, shishasti hang sadhimang tanga prapanyam. Then, Kajun decided to accept Krishna as his guru. He, shishasti hum. I become your disciple. To become disciple means no more argument. Uh, when we talk friendly, there is argument, counter argument. But when there is order from Guru, there is no more argument. Uh, that, therefore, uh, Arjun says, the karpana dosu apohata sabhava. Actually, my uh, behavior should be exactly like a khatriya uh, to fight for the just cause. But in this case I am denying, therefore I am kripon. Kripon means one who does not properly use his position. Uh, one man is very rich, but he does not use his money, simply seize the money. He is called kripon. Similarly, Arjuna is powerful, he can fight, he is a khatriya, but he is denying his ability. Therefore, he is thinking that I have become kripa, miser. Although I have got strength, I am denying to fight. Although I have got money, I do not spend. These are called kripa. The karpanna dosa apa. Now I am in, infected with karpanna dosa. Karpanna dosa apahata sabhava. So when we become puzzled with this material affair, what to do, not do to do or not to do, this is the example. At that time, we must approach a guru. That is the instruction here, you see. Jatshya, prichami tang dharma sangamura chita. When we are bewildered, we do not distinguish what is religious and what is not religious. Uh, do not use our position properly. That is tatpanna dosa apahata sabha. At that time there is need of guru. That is the Vedic instruction. tad sa guru meva vigacche sutriyam brahmanistham. This is the duty, this is civilization that we are meeting with so many problems of life that is natural. In this material world, the material world is problems of life. Padanga padanga jada vipadam. Material world means in every step there is danger. That is material world. So, therefore we should take guide from Guru. Ah from the teacher, from the spiritual master, how to make progress. Because this, that will be explained later on. That the goal of our life, in this, at least in this human form of life, in the Aryan civilization, the goal of life is to understand our constitutional position, what I am. Uh, what I am. If we do not understand what I am, then I am equal to the cats and dogs. The dogs, cats, they do not know. They think that they are the body. That will be explained. <coughs> so, in such condition of life, when you are puzzled, actually you are puzzled every moment. Therefore it is necessary the one should approach to a proper guru. Now, Arjuna is approaching Krishna, the first class guru. First class guru. Guru means the Supreme Lord. He is guru of everyone, Param Guru. So, anyone who represents Krishna, he is also guru. That will be explained in the fourth chapter. Evang parampara praptam imang raja So, uh, Krishna is showing example. Where we should 
offer our surrender and accept Guru. Here is Krishna. So you have to accept Krishna or his representative as Guru. Then your problem will be solved. Otherwise, it is not possible. Because he can say what is good for you, what is bad for you. He asking, just Sreya, just Sreya, sir. Nishtitam Bruhi, Nishtitam. He, if you want advice in instruction, Nishtitam, which is without any doubt, without any illusion, without any mistake, without any cheating, that is called Nishtitam. That you can get from Krishna or his representative. You cannot get right information from the imperfect person or a cheater. Uh, that is not right instruction. Nowadays it has become a fashion. Everyone is becoming guru and is giving his own opinion. I think, in my opinion, uh, that is not guru. Guru means he should give evidences from shastra. The shastra vidhi musridya vartate kamakar. Anyone who does not give evidences, proof from this hastra, then no siddhin shavavnati, he does not get at any time success, no sukham, neither any happiness in this material world, no parangati, and what to speak of elevation in the next life. These are the injunctions. So we must select guru, here it is example, Arjuna. He is accepting Krishna uh, as Guru. Uh, why he is accepting? Because he says, Nahi prapasyami mamapunadya jachoka muchu sanamindriyana avapa bhumava asapatnam ridhyam rajyam sukhanam avichadipattam. So he has selected that the right person Guru. And uh, he says that unless I hear from you what is right and wrong, I cannot decide whether I shall fight or I shall not fight, which way is better for me. I cannot understand. Uh, in this way, eva mukta rishikesam gurakesa parantapa nadasya iti govindam uptya tusning babuva. Rapparati saying, Krishna, that you give me the right direction, otherwise I am not going to fight. He left his weapon and uh, became silent. Tamuvata Rishi Kesha, Prasan Niva Bharat, Senaya Rubhayan Madhi, Visidantam Ridamabhat. Now Krishna took the position of Guru. And he began to instruct. Tamu Vacha Rishikesha. Rishikesha, Krishna's another name is Rishikesha. Rishikesha means Rishika Isha. Rishik means the senses. And Isha, the master. Therefore, Krishna is the master of our senses. Everyone's senses. That will be explained in the thirteenth chapter. The Khetra Gancha Vimana Vidhi Sarva Khetri Subharata. In this body there are two living entities. One is myself, the individual soul, Atma, and the other is Krishna, Paramatma. Ishara Sarva Bhutana Vidhi Sarjana Tishtha. So actually the proprietor is Paramatma. I am given the chance to use it. So my senses, so-called my senses, that is not my senses. I have not created my hand. The hand is created by God, or by Krishna, through the agency of this material nature. And I have given to, given the hand to use it for my purpose, uh, for my eating, for my collecting. But actually it is not my hand. Otherwise, when this hand becomes paralyzed, I am claiming my hand, I cannot use it, because the power of the hand is withdrawn 
by the proprietor. Just like in a house, rented house, you are living. If the proprietor of the house, landlord, eject you, you cannot eject. You cannot eject. Similarly, we can use this body. As long as the pro real proprietor of the body, Rishi Kesha, allows me to stay. Therefore, Krishna's name is Rishi Kesha. And this Krishna consciousness movement means that we have accepted the senses from Krishna. It should be used for Krishna. Instead of using it for Krishna, we are using it for our sense gratification. This is our miserable condition of life. Uh, it's like you are living in a place for which you have to pay rent, but if you don't pay rent, you think that it is your property, then there is stuff. Uh, similarly, Rishi Kesha means the real proprietor is Krishna. Uh, I have been given this property uh, that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Ishara Sarvabhutana Riddese Arjuna Tishthati Brahmayan Sarvabhutani Jantra Rurani Maya. Jantra, it is a machine. This machine has been given by Krishna to me. Uh, because I desire that if I get a machine like a human body, then I can enjoy like this. So Krishna fulfills your desire. All right. And if I think, if I get a machine in which I can directly suck blood of other animals, all right, Krishna says, he takes the machine of a tiger's body and use it. So it is, this is going on. Therefore his name is Rishikesha. And when we understand properly that I am not the proprietor of this body, Krishna is the proprietor of the body, I wanted a certain type of body to use it for my sense gratification. He has given it and I am not happy. Therefore, I shall learn how to use this machine for the purpose. This is called Bhakti. Rishi Kena Rishi Kesa Sevanam Bhakti Ruchyate. When these senses, because Krishna is the proprietor of the senses, he is the proprietor of this body. So when this body will be utilized for Krishna's service, that is our perfection of life. Rishi Kena Rishi Kesa Sevanam Bhakturi Sarvapadhi Vinir Muktam Tatparatena Nirmalam Rishi Kena Rishi Kesa Sevanam Bhakturi Chate If you want the definition of bhakti, <coughs> the bhakti means to use the things for the purpose. That is right use. Uh, if, uh, if somebody used for another purpose, that is misuse. Uh, so bhakti means when things are used properly, that is called bhakti. Uh, now we are thinking that this machine, this body, I am born in India. So it is Indian machine. It should be utilized for India's profit. Another person is thinking, this machine, it is gotten from America, so it should be used for uh, America. That is going on in the name of nationality or communism or society or friendship and this and so on. We have invented so many isms, but they are all misused. Because actually the machine does not belong to the American or the Indian or the African. The machine belongs to Krishna. So this is misuse. So when we understand that we are misusing this machine improperly, that is called pure machine. That is called pure understanding or Krishna consciousness. Sarvabhadhi binin muktam. I am not American. I am not Indian. I am not Brahman. I am not Khatriya. I am not human being. I am Brahma. I am Brahma. Not the Supreme Brahma. But part and parcel of Brahma. Supreme Brahma is Krishna. Parabrahma. He is addressed as Parabrahma. So, we are part and parcel of Brahma. 
Therefore, we are Brahman. So, we have to realize this position. Ah, Brahm, Aham Brahma, I am Brahma. I am not this machine. I am put into this machine. Ah, but because the machine is gotten either from America or from India or from heaven or from hell, I am designating this machine as American machine or Indian machine. Actually, this machine belongs to Krishna and it should be used for Krishna. Therefore, the definition of bhakti means rishi kena rishi kesa sevanam bhakti rishi. This is bhakti. So, Krishna, now, he has taken the position of teacher. Now, no more friendly talking because Arjuna has accepted him as the teacher. So, he is the teacher uh, it is the duty of the teacher to punish or to chastise the disciple when he is wrongly going on. That is the duty. So, first teaching of Krishna, because Arjuna has accepted his uh, leadership, his teachership, his instruction, accepted that he will follow his instruction. The first instruction is, asokshananusuchastam prajnavadam kabhasit. You rascal. You are rascal, you are talking like a very learned man, that uh, how shall I kill my the grandfather, how shall I kill my brother, how this and so on. This is all bodily concept of God. Uh, you are mm, talking on the bodily platform. Uh, so what is this body? It is to be neglected? Yes. Asachanan sochasta. It is not to be lamented. Asachanam suchan pragyavadam sa gatasum avatasum sa nanu suchan ti pandita. Pandita means one who knows that I am not this body. That is pandita. The body is a lump of matter. So what is the value of lump of matter? Either while it is moving or while it is not moving. It is a lump of matter. Uh, suppose we are not moving with this body, with nice coat, pant, hat. Uh, that's all right. But what it is? It is a lump of matter. Either coat, pant, or these bones, and the skin, and the blood, and the stool, and urine. Whatever this body is composed of, it is all material. And when the living entity goes away from this body, the same lump of matter. Does it change? Uh, so we are not lamenting at the present moment because it is moving. Uh, and as soon as the moment is stopped, I say, oh, my father has gone, my son has gone, and we lament. Uh, so actually the body is the same. The same body is lying here as dead body, whom you are lamenting, my father. But you have never seen your father. You have seen in only the coats and pants and the body. That is your education. Therefore, Krishna says, or oh John, you are thinking on terms of this coats and pants and bones and muscles and urine and stool. Therefore, you are a scale number one. This is the first aspect. Do any gentleman uh, lament for these torn up cloth bones and skins and urine and stool. Does any sane man lament? This is the first thing. So, asachanam suvutastam prajnavadam suvhas. You are talking just like a very learned man eh, to argue with me. But you are fool number one. Because agatasun, gatasun, agatasun cha, nanu suvutanti pandita. This is not the business of the pandita. So this is not the position of Arjuna only. The whole material civilization, the whole population of the whole world, they are like this, asachan on Sutrasta. When the body is living, when the body is moving, they are busy how to make the body come out. And when the body is not moving, they are living. That is the business. The, our business is 
the material civilization means sochati kankhati to business kankhati means desire while the body is moving we are desiring making plan i want this i want this my son required this my nation required this my community required this this is means kankhati desiring to possess this body and when the body is lost then sochati oh my father is lost my brother is lost my son is lost so two business so long there is no spiritual knowledge we have got on the material conception of body two business sochati kankhati uh, desiring for things which we do not possess and lamenting for things which we have lost this is our two business but if you become self realized if you become uh, aware actually what you are then na sochati na kankhati brahma bhuta prasanna atma na sochati na kankhati sama sarvesh bhuteshu mad bhakti lavati param this is the business so our this krishna consciousness movement is trying to uh, educate people to give up this bodily concept of life this is the saman substance of this movement and unless we come to understanding that i am not this body i am a spirit soul my aim of life is missing uh, then we remain cats and dogs जशात बुद्धि कुनपेति धात के सधिक कलत्रा दिशु भौमयज्जदि जतीथ बुद्धि सलिले न करहिति जनेसु अभिज्ञेसु सैव गोख एनीवन हु इज लीडिंग हिज लाइफ ऑन द बॉडीली कांसेप्ट ऑफ लाइफ ही इज नो बेटर देन द डॉग्स एंड हॉग सो इन ऑर्डर टू स्टॉप द सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ डॉग्स एंड हॉग the krishna consciousness movement is essential krishna consciousness mean to take in instruction from the krishna this is the first instruction asa chan anusu tatsam pragya vadam samay so gradually he will give instruction so it is our request that you try to study bhagavad gita as it is don't try to distort it by your so called education try to understand krishna as he is saying then you will be benefited your life will be success thank you very much hari krishna Is very soul. Soft means itana, and chit means knowledge, and ananda means bliss. So, if we study ourselves, this body, this body is not itana. Soft means itana. So, if we study this body. In the Bhagavad Gita, in fact, antavatu me deha nitasu kasari na. This body is antavat; it will perish. Therefore, it is not soft. Soft means eternal, and the body is not eternal. Therefore, it is very difficult to understand what is soft, because we have no education, no experience. Everything is uh, annihilated, destroyed. Anything material. So actually, we have no experience. What is soft? Uh, so, but Vedic instruction is sadgama asotuma. Don't remain in our soft, non-eternal. Come to the platform of eternity. Sadgama asotuma. So that is the mission of life. 
human form of life is distinct from the cats and dogs because if you instruct to the cats and dogs what is soft and what is asoft it is impossible for them to understand it is not that uh, basic instruction is asatoma don't remain cats and dogs uh, in the human form only you come to the platform of eternity asatoma uh, sadgama so we must try what is eternal so far at the present condition as this material condition we do not know what is actually eternal uh, because our body is not eternal uh, therefore the first instruction is that you are lamenting on the body which is not eternal but you are eternal your business is to understand the eternal that is called soft and chit chit means knowledge knowledge at the present moment we are all in ignorance we do not know uh, what is the next step whether i am going to live or to die everything in ignorance therefore this body is also not chit it is full of ignorance the soft chit and ananda that we have got experience where is ananda ananda means blissfulness joyfulness uh, there is that cannot be any joyfulness in this body there are three kinds of miserable condition of material life adhyatmik adibhautik adidvaidi so either this three or one or two is always there adhyatmik means miserable condition on account of the body and mind so wherever we go the body is there uh, so even if i am very opulent materially with wealth we are getting experience that i mean the most rich richest man in the society he is committing suicide a uh, suicide why he has got every resources to enjoy why is committing suicide that means there is also no ananda even you possess the material thing so there is no question of sat chit ananda uh, in this material condition of life if you understand what is spiritual life and if you practice how to come to the spiritual life spiritual platform as krishna is then we can become we call with krishna satchidananda otherwise we are in ignorance this body is not such a thing